Christy Lynn, it's so exciting. <laughs> I have loved having you in my program working with me so much. It's been so fun. It's been really fun. And, and just to watch you not only be so ready to change your life, but willing to put in the work, you were like, I will do whatever it takes to change and then watch this dramatic transformation before my eyes it was so beautiful <laughs> so can you describe how you feel now and who you are now you know as a result of this how do I you feel your life now from eight weeks before i feel well, like a different person um i feel like a different person i feel like i see myself for my true self for the first time um I, you mentioned at the beginning of the program, falling in love with yourself. And I thought, whatever, like, I finally understand what that means. I've never felt that before. Um, <clears throat> I just feel, I feel strong. I feel grounded. I feel empowered. I think that's probably one of the biggest words to say is I feel very empowered and strong. Yeah, you really are. You've just aligned with who you really are. Haven't, uh, haven't you? Like you were, I just remember when we first met that you just seemed really lost. And well, you can you describe how you were when we first spoke? I was over it. I was so over all of it. I was, you know, another failed relationship that was just like all the other relationships, you know, and um, a toxic. Knew, yeah, and and I knew that that it was me because I was the common denominator but I didn't know what was wrong. And I had been in therapy for 15 years, the better part of it. And I logically understood a lot, but changes weren't happening. And, um, you know, it kind of cracks me up because you, you've said so many times when the student's ready, the teacher arrives and you showed up right on time. Like, I have so happy cool. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the internet was listening to me and it was, it's, it brought you to me online and um i haven't you know, talked about this but once once i arrive in your life i don't go away either i hope not i love having you here i love having you here so um i was just ready i was over it i didn't want to keep living my life the way that i had been living it i really believe that you know we've got one shot while we're here on this planet and there was just something that was not firing the right way in my brain and I was just stuck in a loop and, and I, I didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah, it, and you know, what motivated you was just, I can't do another toxic. I can't do it again. I cannot do it again. Mm. Yeah. And that is absolutely how I knew you were ready because, well, let me ask you, did you have any fears when you know, I gently encouraged you to go, yep, make this decision, join me, take my hand. And a lot of people get very scared at that point because they think, oh, I've wanted, for years I've been praying for someone to come to give me the answers. And But when they say, okay, let's do this, it's like, what now? It's really scary. So did you no. have My biggest fear was continuing to live the way that I, I was living. You know, people get they get comfortable in their blanket. Like my, my friend put this analogy to me once that people like, you know, being comfortable in their dysfunctional blanket yeah. and because it's all they know. And um, I was just sick of living the way that I was living that I didn't care. I'm ready to light that blanket on fire. And I mean, sure, yeah. there's a lot that I'm going to have to learn moving forward about relearning things and relationships and stuff like that. But I just knew I couldn't keep going the way I was going. I love that analogy because it is like that. Like the difference with you and many other women who don't, who keep going around that loop and that groundhog day of repeated abusive relationships is that your certainty that I'm done, I will do whatever it takes. Yeah. My like I will just be yeah. absolutely and just hang out with my puppy dog the rest of my life. I'm so over shit. Yeah, and it, it, your determination was greater than your fear or wanting to just go back to putting mm -hmm. it. Because it does take you out of your comfort zone, changing mm -hmm. your life. And mm -hmm. quite often when you get outside that comfort zone, you think, oh, this is unfamiliar, this is scary. And that comfort blanket goes back around you no matter how dysfunctional that blanket is right because so, it's predictable yeah 
but but you did you said i'll do whatever it takes viv let's do this you stepped outside of your comfort zone and had transformation within weeks after all those years of therapy hadn't worked right. so how was that process for you you know there was times and i'm sure it was painful but how quickly did you feel that you were changing can you describe it for me yeah um i started to feel a shift within the first few weeks um just really i think once i got everything out on paper and was able to kind of look at all the different parts of myself and the different parts of my life and the common themes from childhood that led up to today, it, you know, it, it all started making sense. And then really seeing how I saw myself, you know, believing all the stuff that the outside world had told me, you know, you, you just take in all this information, especially when you're young and it just sticks to you. And now that, that I've dissected that and I've actually looked at who I really am, and what were those? What were those beliefs? Was it like I'm not good enough? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not good enough. Um, I'm not lovable. Um, I think I'm not good enough is the biggest one. Mm. I'm too much. I'm too loud. Um, but I'm not good enough is really what it came down to. And even like imposter syndrome at work and just feeling very insecure. Um, mm. But always, I was always still myself. But I knew that a lot of people didn't receive it always well but um and what do you think's been the most profound change because honestly it was like watching a butterfly come out of this cocoon i mean you're a different person like you were really lost mm -hmm. and yeah how were you when you came to me just describe that i think the biggest profound change was i was I was very much in a self-loathing place when I came to you. I was drinking a lot. Um, I was not feeling good about myself at all. And, um, you know, here I am now. I'm, I'm much more in a place of self-love. And, you know, I would do things beforehand that I thought were self-love. I bought the house. I'd go on the trips. I'd go on nice dinners and things like that. But I was just functioning. You know, that was just functioning. And now I've I've learned to nurture my inner child and love her and um, just really feel a lot of self-love and understanding and compassion for myself. Um, and, you know, I, I quit drinking. Technically, I quit drinking six months ago, but it's been four months since I've touched alcohol. And, you know, I just wake up with a much bigger sense of pride and I just want to take care of myself and love myself. Whereas before, I just was destroying now, myself. Now you've gone to even getting rid of anyone toxic in your life. You've had really, can you yeah. tell the impact this has had on your life? Come yeah. Um, yeah. I've Well, because I had people in my life that would walk all over me and I was a doormat or they could, felt like it was okay to insult me and I just wouldn't say anything or, you know, I sometimes would even just be passive aggressive. I would just take so much and then finally like, ah, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm at the point now where I'm like, if you're not good for me, get the fuck out. Like, if you're going to insult me, there's the door. <laughs> you know, I'm, you've got fantastic boundaries now. Yeah. Yeah. I've really put down a lot of boundaries and, um, I'm, I'm not accepting, I'm not accepting criticism from other people anymore, especially people who consider, you know, themselves are, I considered friends or family, you know, if I have to put space between us, I'm okay with that. I'm here to protect myself now. I'm not, I'm not a martyr anymore. That's brilliant. And I remember when you came to me, there was a lot of anger, a lot of pain. Um, just, you were so unaligned with who you really are and who I see now. Well, How even, Oh, go ahead. You know, how does that feel? Just talk me through that. Uh, it feels great. Um, I just feel like there was just, I knew like my beliefs and I, I knew like what I stood for, but I didn't really have it out on paper where it's like, okay, what am I willing to put up with? What am I not willing to put up with? What is it that I really am passionate about? Like, and what is, you know, 
has wiggle room and having all of that out, like I can really say, this is what I believe. This is how people can treat me and anything else isn't good enough for me. And I repeat that to myself all the time now. Is you've, got me in your, you've got me in your head now. Is that good yes, enough? Yes, I hear you. Is, is, that, um, is that good enough for you? <laughs> I think I'm in a lot of women's heads now. It's so fun. But I ask myself that all the time, things big and small now. What I love about this, you see, is when you can, and this is what the whole program's about, isn't it? That when you came to me, it was like this frightened little girl who was angry and scared and didn't know what to do with her emotions and didn't know why, why do I keep repeating? I know in my head that I shouldn't do this, but I keep attracting these, I won't say what I was going to say, but <laughs> uh, just... not very nice men. Yeah, nice men. Um, and now what you're describing is a really empowered, aligned adult who is choosing how she responds to the world, deciding what type of love she wants. Is that fair to say that? Yeah, I'm almost afraid I'll never get laid again because I'm like, mm, you're not good enough for me. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> because you do see the red flags now, don't you? You don't ignore oh, them. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I mean, I saw them before you know, through my therapy and stuff, but I ignored them. Yeah. Oh, well, mm, you know, and, and one of the things that you, you talk about is not dating out of loneliness and, or boredom. And I totally was doing that before. So Mr. Bean's got to keep me company. <laughs> That's the dog. <laughs> That's the dog. Yes. Mr. Bean's the dog. <laughs> That's okay. Because you know, when, now you're so aligned and you've shifted the, the, the really nice guys will start to come. And you won't push them away this time. <laughs> right. Right. Nice guys this time. <laughs> well, even my friends are shifting rapidly, rapidly, rapidly. I've manifested, I've, I've become more spiritual in the last couple of years. And I manifested some, you know, stuff with friendships and different mm -hmm. roles in my life that weren't being filled, uh, that I needed. And it's all started to come to me. And, and, and I even, I even said a prayer one night to, um, be shown um, who was good for me in my life and who isn't. And within two days, I had two different girlfriends uh, kind of act up and, and throw insults at me. And I was like, wow, there's my sign. I mean, it was like that. So, you know, and I just had a spiritual retreat this past weekend and I met so many new people and there's some people there that I've already known for a little while. And I'm just honing that in. I'm honing that community in because that's where I need to be. That's why, that's why I actually call it the power within you program because the, you know, the power is within you. And when, when you really go through the process that I put you through, and I know sometimes it's, it's hard and it's painful. And there's a, I, I remember you had a lot of tears, mm -hmm. you had a lot of tears through it, but then a lot of joy. What it, it was, a, it was a real mix of um, tears, but massive breakthroughs. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I had I had stuff that I had been trying to to grieve or to crack open for a while. And I remember the first night that I sat down with your workbook, which by the way, I avoided it like crazy at first. I was like, mm, I'll do that tomorrow. Mm, I'll do that tomorrow. And I just sat down with myself at the table. It was like someone cracked a coconut and the water just poured out. It was just this emotional release. And I don't, it was part of it was grieving, part of it was, was gratitude that I'm finally getting into this. It was just such a mix of different emotions, but it was a release. And I, you know, you hold on to stuff for so long, it'll, you know, it'll weigh you down. And I was so happy to finally start having it open up. Yeah. And when you change that, you change everything in you, everything outside of you changes, mm -hmm. your boundaries, what you'll put up with the friends that you start to attract different types of friends. It's, it's, it really does change everything, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about it. There's like so much now to discover that, you know, I hadn't before. I've just new relationships, new friendships, new, new relationship with myself. That's the biggest, yeah. the biggest one. And you were fearful of the future before, but now you're excited. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And can yeah. you, what, what, I know I'm here to listen, but what, what was it like working with me? Can you describe? 
<laughs> you can play whatever you like here. <laughs> no pressure. Um, working with Viv, <laughs> it was like you took our hand and you cheerleaded us all along the way. You gave us so much support and so much love. And, but you nudged us too. You pushed us out of our comfort zone. Um, but you also brought everybody together and we were all able to love and support each other. And, you know, those weekly calls were the highlight of my week. And now that I'm not seeing you once a week, I want to see you again. <laughs> That's right. We can sort that out. <laughs> okay, good. That's cool. well, you, you, you do go on to the alumni group as well. So it does continue mm -hmm. after yeah. the the program so what would you tell anyone because i there are a lot of people who get to that that edge and say i'm ready and then when they start to get out of their comfort zone when i say okay grab my hand they just oh it's too what would you say to them it is worth the leap it is so worth it get rid of that shit <laughs> get into these these new shoes because it is beautiful on this side it is absolutely beautiful on this side I found that it was more beautiful on that side than I could ever have imagined. I mean, yeah. you've already just started. You wait till you see what <sighs> takes you. Like, there's no stopping you now, Christy Lynn. There's no, no watch out. <laughs> watch out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your life would have been like if you didn't take that leap? Mm, I think that I would have done my soul a disservice and I don't think it would have been a very happy life. I think it would have been dark. I think it would have been painful. Um, I think it would have been really sad. Well, I'm so, oh, I'm so glad you did. I love yes. it so much. You really, you light up my life every time I see you. And I'm just so glad that you found me and you trusted me and you took my hand. And I'm so glad that you know, that just to see you step into that beautiful woman that you are is just, you know, makes me so proud and so happy because you deserve it. <laughs> I just feel like, I feel like a goddess. I feel like fire. I do. I do. If, this if it girl is on fire. fire. It every day. <laughs> this girl is on fire. This girl is on fire. This girl is on fire. <laughs> well, no, I won't try and sing. That would be really embarrassing. <laughs> and doing some mum dancing to boot. <laughs> well, big hugs. You know, I can't wait to meet you in person and give you the biggest I hug know, ever. That is happening. That has to happen. <laughs> It will. All right, my lovely, thank you so much. And um, I'm not out of your life yet. <laughs> You're not getting rid of me. <laughs> All right, thank I'll speak to you. Later. Okay. Bye.